Hi everyone, this is Gaurav and today we will be discussing an important topic from the course that is Biomedical Engineering and topic is basically the Nervous System, Anatomy of Nervous System and Neuronal Communication. So in this particular topic, in this particular segment of this Unit 3 of Biomedical Engineering, we will be taking the concept of functions of nervous system, division of nervous system, structure of neuron and how neuronal communication takes place with the help of neurotransmitter. So let's start with this presentation. So what actually the basic definition and basic structure of nervous system? Okay, more or less why we require nervous system? All, always this type of question came in our mind. So I would like to just brief you out that the function of nervous system is basically to gather information from inside and outside the body with the help of sensory neurons and transmit information to the processing areas of the brain and spinal cord. The process of this information in the brain and spine is basically an integral function. So nervous system is believed to have 10,000 million of such cells and these cells are basically called as neurons and glia. The glia being present in greater number than neurons. It has been said that more than 85 billion neurons exist in our brain. Okay. From functional standpoint, nervous system can be divided into two major compartments. The somatic nervous system and the second part would be the visceral nervous system. In the somatic nervous system, it basically deals with sensory information like touch, temperature, pain, limb position and different types of pathways whereby control and movement of skeletal muscles take place. Okay? And in the case of visceral nervous system, it basically controls the internal organs that are not normally under the influence of blood vessels like the dilation, constriction of the pupils, of the eye and so on. So these are the basically functional standpoints okay, regarding the division of nervous system. But if we consider the anatomical viewpoint, the main components of the nervous systems are the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. In the subsequent slides, we will be understanding what are the parts deals with central nervous system and how peripheral nervous system consist of carnial nerves, autonomic system and neuroendocrine system. This particular segment we will be discussing in subsequent slides. Now, a very crucial and important question that what is neuron? Okay. So first important point regarding the neuron, you must jot down that neuron is the basic functional cell of nervous system okay basic functional cell of the nervous system okay and there are billion of neurons okay in our brain in our nervous system okay when you just see the generic view of this particular neuron you will find that this particular neuron consists of dendrites okay cell body axon saturn cell myelin sheath node of ranvier and you can see that neurons basically are classified as sensory neurons, motor neurons and interneurons. Okay? What actually happens if you just see the structure of this neuron, here are the dendrites. So these are the dendrites. Okay? These are the dendrites. And these dendrites do have receptors. Okay? these dendrites do have receptors and these receptors take the signals from another neuron these dendrites with the help of receptor takes the signal from the another neuron with the help of type of neurotransmitter it is a type of chemical it means these neurons are basically connected with each other okay with the help of dendroids and dendroids do consist of receptors and receptors 
take the signals in the form of electrical pulse and reach the soma of the structure here is the soma and this soma consists of a nucleus okay and this nucleus will have a dna dna is a genetic material okay now further after this dendroid the signal reaches to this particular portion and this particular portion is basically known as exon okay overall over here it is a exon hillock but after the exon hillock the signal reaches to the exon exon is basically a fiber which carries impulses away from the cell body okay exon is basically the fiber which carries the impulses from the cell body and cell body is basically over here okay so this is basically exon myelin sheath over here you just see this terminology myelin sheath myelin sheath is a basically a, a insulated medium and it is basically made up of dense lipid layer okay so myelin sheath is a dense lipid layer which insulates the exon and make the exon look gray grayish color you will find it so just because of grayish color sometimes it has been asked in competition that why exon terminal looks like grayish so you can say it is just because of the myelin sheath and myelin sheath is basically made up of dense lipid layer okay so further electrical impulse moves from the cell body to the exon hillock to the exon and exon which is insulated by the myelin sheath and here there is another terminology used as saturation cells saturation cells saturation cells these cells basically produce myelin or a fat layer in the peripheral nervous system okay please remember saturation cells produce myelin or a fat layer in the peripheral nervous system okay now between between these between these axons you will find there is a node known as node of ranvier okay the node of ranvier is basically the gap okay gap or nodes in the myelin sheath okay so what actually the overall conclusion that electrical signals came to the receptor of the dendroid of one neuron okay and further this signal moves from the cell body to the exon hillock to the exon terminal and this exon terminal again reaches over here you you just see the exon terminals and thereby the classification starts that is the sensory neurons motor neurons and inter neurons sensory neurons basically bring messages to central nervous system motor neurons carry messages from central nervous system inter neurons are basically what these are the neurons between sensory and motor neurons okay and impulses i told you that these impulses what i am talking about these are basically type of a stimulus okay and it is just a stimulus which is which came into existence by a change in the environment with a sufficient strength to initiate the response okay so this is basically the concept of neuron and please do remember that these neurons are interconnected with each other with the help of dendroids dendroids consist of receptors receptors receive the signals and with the help of neurotransmitter because in the subsequent slide i will be telling you about the neuronal communication and thereby i will take this terminology into consideration and you have to remember all these things okay so these are few important points related to neurons let's read it out so first point is the dendroids are finely branched processes arising near the cell body of a neuron the dendroids receives excitatory or inhibitory effects via chemical messengers called neurotransmitters as i told you the cytoplasm is the material of the cell body in which the organelles including the cell nucleus and other 
inclusions are found the nucleus contains the cells chromatic or genetic material the nucleus is rich in rna which is necessary for synthesis of protein this question can be asked synthesis of protein what type of material or what type of genetic material is used you must remember that it is rna functions of neurons this is a very important question that what are the function of neurons if it, if it has been asked you can write that it is basically helps in protein synthesis axonal transport generation and conduction of action potential synaptic transmission formation and maintenance of myelin myelin is a insulating material that forms around the nerves including those in the brain and spinal cord okay as i discussed earlier neurotransmitter as i told you when signal come to the receptor of the dendroid this signal basically communicated by the neurotransmitter so what actually the neurotransmitter let us understand a neurotransmitter is a chemical substance which when released from axon terminal by the action potential produces the momentary changes in the electrical potential when another nerve fiber is stimulated as i told you over here over here these are the basically dendrites okay and these dendrites are having a receptor so electrical signals are received by the or impulses are received by the receptors and these receptors basically are located at the dendroid and these impulses moves from cell body to the axon and then moves to the axon terminal and over here a neurotransmitter type of chemical is released and this chemical will provide signal to the another neuron and another neuron do have dendrites and receptors and type of signal depends upon types of neurotransmitter released okay so this basically is the concept of neurotransmitter okay and if some sort of neurological and psychiatric disorders came it is just because of the gap or anomaly in different types of electrical potentials during the nerve fiber stimulation and there are some disorders over here i have mentioned you can read it out out okay myelin i, I just told you what actually the myelin and this is also in, uh, in into consideration and uh, neurotransmitter now we have discussed i just told you that you can read it out what are the some uh, neurological disorders so parkinson disease depression okay and uh, alzheimer disease schizophrenia so these are the some of the uh, neurotransmitters neurological psychiatric disorders and what are some important neurotransmitters which are commonly uh, in exist uh, and these are the acetylcholine norepinephrine serotonin gamma amino butyric acid are the common neurotransmitters okay so let's move to another slide and this slide is basically very crucial to understand the nervous system and what actually the nervous system let's understand so nervous system is basically i told you that it is anatomically classified into central nervous system okay and central nervous system basically consist of spinal cord brain stem brain central nervous system brain stem basically consist of medulla pons and mid brain okay brain do consist of di encephalon cerebellum cerebrum these topics we will be studying in organization of brain will we'll look after spine is basically the spinal cord okay further if we see the classification of peripheral nervous system in peripheral nervous system you have to look after different types of concepts like corneal nerves okay 
spinal nerves in carnian nerves there are 12 pair spinal nerves there are 31 pairs further it is divided into somatic nervous system somatic means voluntary and autonomic nervous system that is involuntary voluntary means that relaying information from skin sense organ and muscles to central nervous system bring responses back to skeletal muscles for responses this is voluntary okay you can control but if we talk about the autonomic nervous system of the peripheral nervous system these are involuntary okay these are basically uh, these regulates body body's involuntary responses relays information into internal organs okay further divisions of autonomic nervous systems are sympathetic nervous system which are basically uh, you can uh, talk about emergency okay or some sort of fight or a flight in that uh, particular uh, terminology sympathetic nervous system came into uh, prominence and parasympathetic nervous system when body is at rest with a normal functioning conditions in, like uh, in a normal everyday so in that particular part we can talk about the parasympathetic nervous system working okay so this is the classification of nervous system that is the anatomically part no schematic diagram of the nervous system how things will just prevail so you just see that there are the receptors and effectors okay receptors are basically the sensory receptors which receives information at the down bottom you will just see the skeletal muscles the smooth muscles these are the effector organs which will react and there is a communication between the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system afferent divisions how sensory neurons sense the signals and that signal reaches to the central nervous system and from that cent uh, from that uh, central nervous system information is received uh, and uh, communicated to the motor neurons okay motor impulses and that motor impulses reach to the afferent division and for the somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system comes into existence whereby somatic we will talk about that voluntary nervous system and autonomic nervous system that is involuntary between the internal organs so this is basically a schematic diagram which will let you know a easy understanding of the nervous system working A reflex arc is also a important terminology and uh, often people just uh, skip this topic but uh, this topic is very essential and uh, very important to understand so what actually the reflex arc if you have any idea please do comment uh, in the uh, comment box but uh, just to brief you that component of reflex A reflex arc is basically a receptor which react to stimulus afferent pathway sensory neurons which basically conducts impulses to the central nervous system interneurons consist of one or more synapses in the uh, central nervous system afferent pathways motor neurons as i discussed in the previous slide effectors are basically muscle fibers so these uh, basically uh, cons uh, overall make up uh, the reflex arc and here are the some important component of reflex arc as i explained in this slide you can just jot down these uh, points and just make notes of it let's see uh, the neuronal communication and uh, just wind up this particular session of the video because this uh, neuron neuronal communication is basically very important topic and it uh, have lot of weightage uh, when we talk about the nervous system so uh, neural communication as i told you that uh, uh, in a brain we are having billion of neurons and neurons are connected with each other okay from one neuron to the another neuron if a signal is transmitted from one neuron to the another neuron it means there would be a presynaptic and postsynaptic information exchange presynaptic neuron is said to be the neuron which basically sends the information to the postsynaptic neuron okay in every neuron structure you will gen generic structure you will find there there are dendrites and dendrite consists of receptor organs and receptor cells and receptor cells basically receive the information by the type of neurotransmitter released okay so neuronal communication is basically more or less is relaying of electrical signals and exchange of ions either positive or negative which is basically across the cell membrane whereby resting potential concept depolarization repolarization comes when i was explaining 
when i was explaining uh, ecg at that time i told you about the repolarization depolarization resting potential and there too we are basically talking about the ion ions and exchange of ion across the cell membranes so neural communication is basically more or less uh, the same concept and here are few points i just made it out just let's look after these points so point second says that when a neuron is resting the charge created across the membrane is called resting potential as it is very true and is usually about 70 millivolt and this means that the inside of the neuron is negative compared to the outside okay that is true and when the signal from other neuron will cause shift in ions or there would be some sort of environmental changes a movement of charge takes place and thus the neuron will wear away from its resting potential and to become depolarized depolarized means less negative and okay hyperpolarized means more negative when a neuron depolarizes sufficiently it sends signals on to the next neuron it is very crucial when neuron gets depolarized then it sends sufficient amount of signal to the next neuron this is a nervous system check a neuron will not propagate any information a neuron will not propagate any information until it is sufficiently depolarized communication between neurons is achieved primarily through neurotransmitters or small molecules that are released to the synapse here is the one concept of overall neural communication in this particular figure there is a there is a presynaptic neuron okay so this particular is the presynaptic neuron and this is the part of the postsynaptic neuron okay here you just see in the postsynaptic neurons here are some dendrites and dendrites do have receptors dendrites do have the receptors and these receptors receive information from the presynaptic axon terminal okay presynaptic axon terminal of the neuron and further this particular gap will consist of neurotransmitter release and neurotransmitter release is basically dependent upon type of activity okay depolarization and repolarization concept so this is all about the concept of neuronal communication nervous system neuron and anatomy let's so let's quickly see about the bioelectric signals and the terminologies which we have used about the repolarization depolarization and resting phase so from this particular diagram we will getting an idea how things will happen so firstly before looking to this particular diagram we should at least have an idea that what are basically bioelectric signals so bioelectric signals are those electrical signals that are biological in their origin and these signals are basically deals with human beings only you know that human body is made up of several tissues and some of the tissues such as heart muscles skeletal muscles smooth muscles okay in smooth muscles you will find that muscles of stomach intestines blood vessels and bladder and some sort of nervous tissues everywhere you will see that there is a exchange of ions ions basically would be sodium potassium calcium chloride ions electrochemical signals are produced from the cells of these tissues when ionic concentrations within the cell changes so in this particular figure you will see there is a ionic concentration if you just see the resting phase okay so in the resting phase you will see this thing that positive concentration is higher at the outer surface as compared to the inner surface why this thing is happening let's look after so i as i told you that electrochemical signals are produced from the cells of these tissues when ionic concentration within the cell changes these ion exist in the liquid medium okay of the cells and the basically the medium which under the normal condition says that 
the concentration of sodium ion is higher at the outer surface when we talk about the resting phase and that is the positive polarities has been shown at the outer surface now when suppose a cell is given a voltage stimulus okay here you just see a cell is given this resting state cell has been given a stimulus and when a stimulus is provided to the cell membrane it causes less negative inside beyond the threshold negative voltage sodium plus channels swings open and you will find that some of the sodium ion get penetrated or potassium ions get penetrated inside the cell membrane and positive charge start getting existing in the inner surface it means stimulus there would be muscle contraction of or anything like that whereby depolarization of the cell takes place after the depolarization has been started you will find that there is a state comes that state is known as complete depolarization hereby you will find that in complete depolarization the outer surface is completely negative charged and the inner surface has become completely positive charge okay so this is the concept when depolarization state takes place and this is the time where the signal flow from one neuron to the another neuron which we were talking in the previous slides whereby there would be some sort of neurotransmitter released between the axon terminal and the post synaptic dendrite receptors okay so from resting phase to the depolarized phase and to the depolarized phase to the complete depolarized phase and again the depolarization starts place whereby charges moves outside okay and positive concentration increases outside the cell membrane and further when the complete repolarization takes place that phase is known as resting phase okay now the crucial point is to understand how this particular pattern of the graph actually tells and what actually signify the action potential graph okay so in this action potential graph you will find that you have to identify where is the potential of resting so please remember here in this the particular graph it has been so that minus 90 millivolt is the potential of the polarized cell that is the resting potential minus 90 millivolt okay and when a stimulus is provided and when a stimulus is provided the voltage reaches from minus 90 millivolt to minus 60 millivolt and this particular phase is known as depolarization okay and after the depolarization the repolarization states started and repolarization state basically tells an idea when voltage from plus 20 millivolt okay plus 20 millivolt reaches to its negative minus 90 millivolt so depolarization ranges basically from minus 90 millivolt to plus 20 millivolt and repolarization phase is basically from plus 20 millivolt to minus 90 millivolt okay and there is sort of current stimulus which is shown which is basically telling you about an idea and insight that depolarization exists just because of the some sort of muscle contraction or external changes or some sort of ionic exchange disturbances between the fluids of the cells so this is basically the concept and how neuronal communication takes place i hope you guys got this idea so in this particular module what we have understood 
firstly we i told you about the functions of nervous system then i just classified the functional standpoints and the anatomical standpoint of nervous system then we have studied the neuron the basic generic diagram of neuron further what actually the neurotransmitter is all about then reflex action we studied that how sensory neuron captures the information place it to the cns central nervous system and from that central nervous system how information is propagated to the motor neurons and how the peripheral nervous system comes into existence with the help of somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system okay and in the last few slides we have studied about neuronal communication and neuronal communication with the help of resting potential depolarization repolarization and this particular action potential graph we probably get an idea of the nervous system and from the next module we will be studying about epsp and ipsp that is most importantly necessary for exam point of view okay so thanks for watching if you find this video helpful please do subscribe like comment and please your informative ideas are always welcome in the comment box if you have any doubt any sort of ppt or pdf you need you just can communicate me on my telegram group or on my email id that is classgoeducation@gmail.com thanks for watching have a good day